Wow. All right, Samsung is in the doghouse. Google's going, well, over the top. And Bond is driving electric. Well, to tech. Welcome back to the most talked about news segment in all of cable. Every day at this time, we are bringing you the latest, the coolest stuff in tech. And it's up to you to decide if you want to look into this, buy it, sell it, whatever you want to do with it. Because it starts here with us talking about it. First up, Samsung, a dog's best friend. This $30,000 doghouse is complete with a paw operating snack dispenser, a treadmill, a hot tub. Geez, I'm moving into this thing. And an entertainment room so the dog can watch TV. That's right, Fido catching Cavuto in a kennel. What? All right, detect watcher Kristen Ruby on if Samsung is barking up the wrong tree. What do you think? Hi. Um, what do I think? I don't think they're barking up the wrong tree. You know, I think that this is good for Samsung to try and keep themselves out there in the news. Obviously, we know Apple is still crushing them. Um, so I, I think Americans spend over $56 billion annually How on their pets. How many people are going to spend $30,000 on a, a few, a very targeted few. O'Reilly and Hannity, that's it. <laughs> targeted Two people. people grand, love spending money on Fido. I understand that. And I have a German Shepherd. I, love, I wonder if they have bigger house for bigger dogs, bigger breeds. But I'm not going to spend $30,000 on a house for her. It is a lot. But people spend on their pets. So, so I you think, think they're, they're, this is not a crazy idea? Samsung could be branching out to something. I think Samsung has to be branching out to something. They're trying here. They're going to try whatever they can try. And if it's a, a dog dream home, really? then I hope it works. Ralph, is it me or is the, the dog featured in, in this promo video? Doesn't the dog look kind of wired to the hilt? <laughs> right? Like heavily <laughs> caffeinated? Right there still is a dog. But it was just like darting around. Anyway, that's just... <laughs> Meanwhile, talk about a tech bubble. If you think Apple's spaceship campus is over the top, then Google's new tented city is really over the top. This climate-controlled headquarters, which is not just a way for dogs, it's equipped with large translucent canopies, restaurants, and running tracks. Hello? Could a Cinnabon be that far off? All right, so Kristen, is Google getting a little off track here? Or like Samsung with the dog thing, doing something right? I think, I think Google's doing something right here. I think this is another example of their limitless ambition, but now in the commercial real estate industry. So I actually think that it's fantastic. I think in order to recruit top talent, people and companies need to do what companies like Google are doing today with this climate-controlled Googleplex, or even co-working companies like a Serendipity Labs or WeWork, what they're doing. That is where it's all about. People want amenities. They want things. But who's buying these things? Whole cities? Not whole cities are buying them. I mean, for this one with Google, the Googleplex, the people that want to work there are obviously investing. It's investing in your talent. And I think that is what really matters. All right, but you're investing in the talent. What's the difference between something like that and like being in a building like this? This is a whole contained biosphere they're talking about, right? Yes, can completely contained. Well, you are actually operating in a bubble, and that there are some constraints with that, which you wouldn't have in a co-working. Well, that's all of Washington, D.C. I mean, <laughs> but you're saying that, don't laugh, this could be the wave of the future. It could be the wave of the future, definitely. Yeah, well, you know, I used to laugh when I remember the World's Fair as a kid in New York. I was just a pup. But I remember they showed this vehicle that would drive on the moon someday. It was the lunar rover. You <laughs> never know. All right, uh, James Bond has got a license to kill it, apparently a license to drive electric. Aston Martin now debuting its first ever electric concept car, complete with a state-of-the-art ejector seat. <laughs> Just kidding on the ejector seat. But anyway, Kristen, um, car's getting a lot of buzz. I don't know if Elon Musk should be worried or Tesla should be worried, but something's going on here. What do you think? I think it's exciting for um, Aston Martin, but I still think they have a ways to go. You know, I think people want to buy these electric vehicles, but sales have been down. And I think that they need to change um, what they're doing in order to increase sales. You know, it's a dumb question on my part, but I just thought whatever you get not using gas, are you just eating up energy from a utility? And, and since a lot of utility energy comes via coal, do you actually risk making the earth dirtier, if you're not a coal fan, I'm saying. So does, is it really that clean a vehicle? You know, I can't speak to how clean it is. What I can speak to is that it's very time consuming. 
That's what I can say, and I think that at the in the end of the so day, good assuming that you have to plug it in. Yes, or... people don't like. So what you're saving on one area, are you really saving that in time? No, and that's the biggest problem with it right now. Yeah, and I still think it's going to cause more marital fights. <laughs> Someone's going to. Um, I thought you plugged it in. I thought, you know, <laughs> People always think I'm crazy enough, but I'm telling you. I love I'm telling that. you. Kristen, thank you very much. Very good having you. Thank you.